In a previous video, I converted an outdated Power Mac G4 into a modern Windows gaming PC using much of the original tower case and some modern PC hardware. You can check the description below for the link to that video. In that video, I also mentioned how expensive Apple's products are, and I even made reference to their latest flagship Mac Pro Professional Graphics Workstation. In this series of videos, I'll be building from scratch a Windows graphics workstation using the same components from a configuration on Apple's website. So let's run over to Apple's website and configure that workstation. Now there are many YouTubers with fancy channels that have millions of subscribers, and I know a few of them have done something like this before, but let's face it, those YouTubers have lots of money and sponsorship from major players in the computer hardware industry as well as a complete staff to help produce their videos. This series of videos is completely different. It's a step-by-step -step guide of how I cost-effectively built a Windows equivalent to a Mac Pro. So let's go. Now if you're watching this video, you're probably like me. You have limited resources, but you still want the performance. So let's start with the basics. Our CPU shown here is a 3.5 GHz 8-core Intel Xeon W processor with Turbo Boost up to 4.0 GHz. Scrolling down, we'll go with 32GB of RAM. Now if you do professional graphics, I don't think the Radeon Pro 580X is a good entry-level graphics card. The 5500X is better, but with only 8GB of video memory, it's still a bit lacking. So let's go with the Radeon Pro W5700X with 16GB of GDDR6 memory. Now almost everyone who does professional graphics these days is recording at 4K even if they decide to publish their videos at 1080p. Video files are huge and can fill up your storage real fast so let's go with 4TB of SSD storage. Let's give the Afterburner card and the wheels. So the price we have to beat is $7,999, bearing in mind that the operating system is also included, so we'll have to include Windows 10 in our build. For our tower, I'm going to remodel an old Power Mac G5 case. The old G5 case is similar in design to the Mac Pro's case, and I'll soon explain why. Although you can find lots of these old towers on eBay, I wouldn't recommend paying these prices though. Try more local sources like Craigslist, OfferUp, or Garage Sales. If you find an eBay listing at a good price, make sure it's local and ask a seller if they're willing to do local pickup so that you can save on shipping. When buying on OfferUp or Craigslist, you might even be able to do a trade with a seller. Now, these are some of the reasons why I wanted to use this case. The material is high quality, the locking mechanism for the side panel is an engineering work of art. And since the side panel doesn't slide into place, there is no danger of scratching the paint job that I'll be adding later. Notice also the rubber seals around the edges and around the holes for the locking mechanism. In addition to giving an airtight seal, they also eliminate vibration. This glass panel is just pure genius. It allows you to observe what is happening inside the case without disturbing the airflow over the CPU's heatsink. And speaking of heatsink, this is something we definitely want to reuse. This is a massive heatsink. Look at that. Now, older CPUs are obviously not as powerful as modern CPUs, and they were very inefficient when we think of the amount of heat they generated. The CPU that came with the G5 would consume about 80 watts or more, but modern CPUs have a better performance, while consuming only 65 watts in most cases. So, I'm confident that we can reuse these heat sinks and reap the rewards of quiet operation at maximum cooling. To help with that, we're going to need these fans, but not these actual fans, newer ones that are the same size. You should never use fans that are this old. Always replace them with new ones. Unfortunately, we won't be able to use these other fans right here. The problem is that those fans are secured to this metal divider which was designed specifically to work with the old motherboard because we're going to be using a different style motherboard, uh, the mini ATX motherboard. Uh, it's just not going to be obviously be completely different from the board that came with this Apple computer. So being that's a different design, we'll have to 
just bypass this metal divider. That shouldn't be a problem though. As you can see right here, the entire front part of the computer is just a giant grill with tiny circular holes. So we should have massive amounts of air rushing through because of the negative pressure caused by the fans at the back. However, if you really want to have two separate air chambers, one for the CPU and one for the graphics card, you could cut this metal divider to fit around your motherboard and that would allow you to put back the intake fans up front. So basically I'm going to fit the motherboard inside this area right here. Also I'll be replacing this old DVD burner with a Blu-ray burner. Yes I know, you're probably asking who watches Blu-rays anymore? People stream movies, that's true and it's a point I'll discuss later. But moving along, up here is where the hard drives are kept and I'll be adding a special package later. You'll see. Now before I continue, let me explain that there are two types of G5 cases. The case I'm using has two 92mm fans at the back with the power supply located in the floor below this panel. The other type of G5 case has a single 120mm fan at the back and in that case, no pun intended, the power supply is located at the top. In an upcoming video, I'll discuss how to cut the case so that you can accurately pl place the motherboard. I'll also provide links to indicate where you can buy kits for cutting the case and mounting the motherboard. Now I highly recommend that you purchase one of those kits instead of trying to figure out the motherboard placement on your own. Those kits contain templates and basically they will allow you to cut the case with a Dremel tool or a similar device. So you're better off going with a solution that is tried and proven. You have been warned. Now if you're watching this video, you're probably very handy with tools or you know enough to copy what I'm doing and get it right. Nevertheless, there are some key things you want to bear in mind. The power supply is hidden in the bottom of the case right here. You will need to remove that as we will definitely need to upgrade the power supply. At the bottom of the case, you will need to remove these four screws. In addition, you will need to remove these two screws on the inside that secure a panel to the power supply. If you don't remove that panel, you're not going to get the power supply out. And make sure you save the hardware so that you can reassemble everything later on. Now you can remove the power supply. Now, if you notice, I haven't really gone into a detailed breakdown of how to disassemble the case and that's because this is not an instructional video. I'm simply sharing my experience in this series of videos. Nevertheless, I know some of you are technicians and engineers and you will no doubt be inspired to do this yourself. For those of you who are DIY weekend warriors, I would recommend the video in the link below. That I think the person who did that video did an excellent job of showing step by step in great detail how to safely remove some of those parts, many of which you're probably going to need when you reassemble your system. I do however recommend that you use the following items, a dust mask, safety glasses and a vacuum. So go on over to that video that shows the detailed disassembly of the G5 and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Remember to click the notification bell and that way you'll be notified when I release part 2 of this video.